On this episode of The Rant, we help solve a murder mystery, take a trip with FFA, tackle some celebrity romance, and celebrate football's journey to the Dome. Hello, Blue Jays. I'm Libby Huff. And I'm Georgia Steeples. Welcome back to The Rant. It's been a long time coming as BF football finally made it to the Dome. Johanna Chris takes us there. Historically, the Bonnaroo football team hasn't been very good. There's been winless seasons and few playoff appearances. But in the past decade, it has brought a lot of positive momentum, with this season being the best in school history. Coming off a first-round win versus Pella, the Jays took a long trip to Glenwood on November 3rd for the quarterfinal matchup. After giving up first possession score to the Rams, the Jays responded with a field goal and tightened up their defense, including a goal line stand shortly before half. In the second half, a fumble recovery by Joey George gave them a short field, and Caleb Moore punched in his first touchdown of the night and gave the Jays their first lead at 10-7. They would then follow that up with a 96-yard, 13-play drive capped off by another Moore touchdown run that put the Jays up 17-7 heading into the fourth quarter. Then, things got wild. Glenwood's passing game exploded, and they cut the lead to 17-14. But the blue and white responded quickly as Moore went up the middle for a 78-yard touchdown to make it 21-14. Glenwood threw the next punch, though, as they cut it to 24-21 with four minutes to go. But a huge landing court interception with two minutes to go set up a run from Batney Reak that will be remembered for years as he took a jet sweep 65 yards down the right sideline for his first career touchdown that would send the Blue Jays to the Unidome for the first time in school history. Oh, it's the best feeling in the world, you know. Ever since, I think it was like second grade, we haven't been to the Dome since, and it's just, oh my God, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Um, you know, uh, it's un- unbelievable as a program, as a team. I mean, we played ball with these guys for so many years now, and to go back to the Dome, this time in high school is an absolute unbelievable feeling. So incredibly proud of this team and these boys and man, everything that they've battled through and uh, they deserve tonight. And so I'm just really happy for them and it was an unbelievable game. Coming in as the number four seed, the Jays drew the number one seed Western Dubuque in their semifinal matchup and they were ready to play from the first snap. After Jordan Ryle hit React for 37 yards and Cole Miller for 25, Moore scored a short touchdown and put the Jays up 7-0. In their next possession, Ryle threw a 50-yard bomb to react to electrify the stadium and make it 14-0. However, the Bobcats from Western Dubuque responded with two passing touchdowns before half to tie things up 14-14. In the second half, the Bobcats found increased success on the ground led by their star running back, Grant Glosser, and they were able to make their first lead in the game 2014. Showing the grit they have displayed all season, the Jays responded with a trick play that resulted in Ryle hitting Moore for a 34-yard touchdown to reign the lead 21-20. But ultimately, the Bobcats' rushing attack proved to be too much as they would punch in another one to go up 28-21, which would end up as the final score. I think the season went pretty swimmingly. Uh, we battled through a lot of adversity, but we were able to come back and uh, do a great job and make school history. It was pretty cool. I'm really proud of our guys and how we all kind of stepped up um, and we turned a not very good situation into something very special. Very proud of our guys. Um, everybody counted us out, but we stood on business like we said we would. Um, made a great run and uh, you know we have a lot to be proud of. Although they fell short of a championship, this memorable season will still go down as the best in school history for now. The play's cast and crew has been up to some sneaky stuff. Let's check out the alibis. The Bonner at Farrar Speech and Theater Department held their annual fall play this year. This year's show was The Alibis. The Alibis entails the convictions and stories behind the eight suspects of a murder. The cast and crew have been working for a solid two months to bring this to life. We managed to catch Ayla Hall at the scene of the crime. So there was kind of a lot of aspects that went into the preparation of the role with like just kind of being casted as the right person and like before the play even started all of the crew came together and we did like a couple bonding things where we kind of fleshed out the characters 
we would rock around and kind of put down some adjectives and really bit onto the characters that normally you wouldn't have done in the past at least. It might seem to be a long time to get ready, but in the eyes of the cast and crew, it was over within a blink. The play ended with a shocking twist that mind-boggled the crowd. The directors got many comments about how organized the crew and cast were. The department is already preparing the spring musical, which was recently announced as Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief. This has been Jaden Johnson reporting for The Rant. FFA students take their annual national convention trip. Garrett Vonstein shows us their travels. On the 31st, members from our FFA went to Indianapolis, Indiana for national convention. Recently, we sent 10 FFA members with over 70,000 other members from all over the country. The chapter made many stops along the way, stopping at the world's largest truck stop and even a dairy goat milk parlor. We got shown how they milk all their goats and even got to try some of their cheeses and even ice cream. We then got back on our trip and made it to Indy before the end of the night. The next day, we headed to the convention center to check out the shopping mall. They had many different booths set up with hats and other FFA gear to offer. And then in the afternoon, they opened up the business and college center. They had hundreds of different businesses and colleges with tons of information to offer. Here's a clip of the amount of people going into the convention hall. There was tons of different businesses to talk to and lots of opportunities they had to offer. We then got to finish the day entering Lucas Oil Stadium for opening ceremonies. As we got in the building, our chapter got the chance to go down to the floor to be right in front of the action. Overall, the chapter had lots of fun this year and learned a lot from the convention. This has been Garrett Vonstein reporting for The Rant. Claire Meislin and Addie Gross give their hot take on the newest celebrity couple. Hello and welcome to our new segment, Tea Time, where we bring you the top five stories in pop culture this week. Are you ready for it? It seems like we've got a lot on the docket today, starting off number one with Taylor Swift's latest relationship status. Recently, Taylor Allison Swift, who was born December 13th at 5.17 a.m. in Reading, Pennsylvania, was enchanted to meet her Mr. Perfectly Fine, that guy on the Chiefs, putting his name on the map. Do you mean Travis Kelsey? I've never heard of him. Two-time Super Bowl champion, four-time first-team All-Pro, an eight-time Pro Bowler, and arguably one of the best tight ends in the league, Travis Kelsey? Sounds like he's got quite a big reputation, but it still doesn't ring a bell. But it does remind me that Taylor Swift has 12 Grammys, 23 MTV Video Music Awards, 29 Billboard Music Awards, 40 American Music Awards, and 101 Guinness World Records. Clearly, she did things greater than dating the guy in the football team. Is there a Guinness World Record for Taylor Swift stalker? Anywho, if you didn't already know, they're dating. Call it what you want, but he is already the king of her heart. As if this whole thing hasn't already been broadcast to the world. Everything has changed. You can't even watch a football game without the announcers bringing it up. Look at this stat that ESPN made. You need to calm down. He plays better with her there anyways. And when he's at her concert, she performs even more amazing. During Taylor's November 11th show in Argentina, she switched the lyrics of her song Karma to say, The Guy on the Chiefs. Seems I've bragged about Taylor long enough, so let's highlight our next celebrity. Number two. Oh wait, we don't have any more time left because someone kept talking about Taylor Swift. Oopsies. Look what you made me do. Either way, sounds like a love story to me. He might even be the one. I'm dying to see how this one ends. Thank you for watching our show. Tune in next time and maybe we'll get to the second story. Thanks for watching our show. Follow us on all our socials to get all Blue Jay Digital's content. Bye. Bye.